Welcome to another video. We want to find all polynomials p of x. For non-zero values of x that are real, and the polynomial behaves in this way. p of x multiplied by p of 1 over x is equal to p of x plus p of 1 over x. This was sent to me a while ago, but I never looked at it. But today I was going through some problems I would like to do, and this one just caught my eyes. So the first thing I did was I plugged in 1 just to see what kind of polynomial we're dealing with, because 1 is going to work. Because if I plug in 1 here, this is p of 1 times p of 1. So that's p of 1 squared is going to be p of 1 plus p of 1, which is 2 times p of 1. So ultimately, the picture is we're going to have p of 1 squared equals 2 times p of 1. So if I try to find what p of 1 is going to be, I'm going to have p of, if I move p of 1 here, see, p of 1 squared minus 2 times p of 1 is going to give me 0. So that p of 1, if I factor out p of 1, I'm going to have p of 1 uh, minus 2 equals 0. If I solve this, it means that p of 1 is either going to be 0 or p of 1 equals 0 or p of 1 equals 2. So, the first impression is that the polynomial I'm looking for might come in two forms. One form in su is such that, so these are the only two ways, only two um, ways P of 1 is going to behave. It's either going to give me 0 or give me 1. So I am not, or give me 2 rather. I am not anticipating a single polynomial. There might be multiple polynomials, but at least I got two of them with 1. Let's get into the video. The polynomial we're looking for is this guy or this guy, but it's easier to isolate this guy. So I'm going to rewrite this polynomial and say that the polynomial of x will be, if I move this over here, I'm going to have p of x times p of 1 over x minus p of 1 over x. Let me see if I can manage this space. Let's divide the board here. Okay. I can actually factor p of 1 over x. Okay. Let's see. So this is going to be 1. Yep. So now I have a product of two polynomials. Neither of the two polynomials is what I'm looking for. Remember, this is what I'm looking for. So let's give this guy uh, another name. Let's call it R of X. Okay. So that it is easier for us to do the multiplication. So we're going to say, let r of x be equal to p of x minus 1. Okay, if I say p of x minus 1 is r of x, I want to go back to this original equation and see what's going to happen if I replace p of x with something in terms of r of x, because then we, we will see a behavior that restricts whatever we're thinking. Okay, so here, firstly, um, I need to rewrite p of x. So I know that p of x will be, if you move the 1 here, it's going to be r of x plus 1. Okay, so the original equation on the left-hand side is now going to be P of x, which is going to be r of x plus 1 times p of 1 over x, which is going to be r of 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so now the original equation will become, 
let me write it here, tiny, it's going to be r of x plus 1 times r of 1 over x plus 1. And then the right hand side is just going to be, oh, I may have to move this line, so the right hand side is going to be p of x, which is the same thing as r of x plus 1, plus p of x, 1 over x, which is the same thing as r of 1 over x plus 1. Okay, this is the crucial relationship. So now we can compare both sides. Let's simplify the left-hand side first. If I multiply this by this, I'm going to end up with r of x times r of 1 over x. Okay, let's remove this. Okay. Then I'm going to have plus r of x. Then I'm going to have plus r of 1 over x. Then I'm going to have plus 1. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have r of x plus r of 1 over x. Plus 1 plus 1, that's plus 2. You know what? I'm just going to write plus 1 plus 1. Because I want you to see what I'm going to cancel out on either side. Now see this. r of x takes out r of x. R of 1 over x takes out R of 1 over x. Whoa. This also takes out this guy. So the only thing remaining on the left is this product. And the only thing remaining on the right is 1. So we have R of x, R of 1 over x is equal to 1. Now this is the key to solving this problem because the product of any two polynomials can never be a constant. And it will not even be a monomial unless this is a monomial and this is a monomial. Remember, this is true for all x's. We're not plugging in actual numbers. We're plugging in x. So if you have a polynomial, the form of all general polynomials will be, um, let's take a constant, let's say ax to the n. Let's call this a1 plus tap, 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 all the way to 1. That's the general form of a polynomial. You're going to have a2x to the n minus 1. That's the form of a polynomial. You do the same thing here. But here, what you're plugging in is r to the 1 over x. So instead of x to the n 1, it should be 1 over x to the n. So watch this. So what you have is you have now for the polynomial, the, the coefficients will still be the same because it's the same polynomial. You're just changing x to 1 over x. So if this was a1, this two also will be a1. So it's just 1 over x to the n, flap, tap, 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 plus 1. Okay? If this is 1. If it is not 1, let's call it a0. Okay? a0. a0. Okay? Let's call this a n. Okay? <laughs> So that's a0, and it's equal to 1. Now, notice this, that this is actually a sub n, x to the negative n. Maybe I should rewrite it, because this would be x to the negative n. It's a better presentation. x to the negative n. OK. Now, if you look at what we have, you cannot get 1 from this multiplication unless this guy here times this guy gives you 1 and everything else is a 0. 
it means this is a zero. Well, if this is a zero, then it means the, the function is constant. There is no need for x because all these other ones will cancel out. So the only way you could have this product and this product give you one is if this is a monomial. It doesn't have multiple terms in x because there's no place the x's are going. X's don't cancel out when you multiply polynomials. Okay, the coefficients change, but they don't cancel out. Even difference of two squares, they will not cancel out. You still have at least a binomial. Okay, so what we have is going to be since the product is a is a constant. Then this function and the other function are of one over x are monomials. This is the hardest part of this explanation. Because once you understand this, we can just move on and write what these functions are. So we know that r of x must be some function which we can call ax to the n. This is it. There is nothing you add to it. There is no constant. Okay, so in what I wrote here, this is the only thing that makes sense. Anything here does not make any sense because otherwise this will be zero and that makes it not true for all x. So x has to be in the polynomial. Okay, now. We also have r of 1 over x will be the same thing. But instead of x to the n, it will be x to the negative n. So, what happens? If you multiply this by this, you're going to get 1. So what we need is just to find what a is going to be. So we know that ax to the n times ax to the negative n equals 1. Well, the product of these two is definitely going to give us a squared, just a squared, because this times this will give us 1. So we have that a squared equals 1, which means that a is plus or minus 1. Therefore, r of x plus or minus plus or minus x to the n and that's what we need because p of x is r of x plus 1 so we know that p of x is plus or minus x to the n plus 1 We're done. So we can say that p of x is 1 plus x to the n, 1 plus x to the n, or p of x is 1 minus x to the n. So any polynomial that looks like this will satisfy this condition. Okay, now let's go back and test the one that I said from the beginning. When x equals one, p of one is gonna be one plus one to the n. That's one plus one, which is two. Yes, we said we either get two or we get zero, remember? Or it's gonna be one minus one to the n, which is zero, zero or two. That works. Okay, just to test, let's do check here check if let's pick let's pick the positive version or the net it doesn't matter let's pick the positive version 1 plus x to the n 1 plus x to the n multiplied by 1 plus 
1 over x to the n. Okay, we're doing the left-hand side. Let's see if we're going to get the right-hand side. Well, this is equal to, these two multiply, you get 1. This times this is going to be um, 1 over x to the n. This times this would be x to the n. And this times this is going to be plus 1. Well, as you can see, this is p of 1 over x. That's p of 1 over x, based on this definition. And this is x to the n plus 1 is going to be this one, p of x. Oh, so you see that p of x times p of 1 over x is going to give us p of 1 over x plus p of x, which is the same thing reversed. Okay. I hope you got something from this. Actually, you see this polynomial here is a Laurent polynomial. Okay, you might do some more research about it. Maybe I should do a video on it and then explain what Laurent polynomials behave like. Okay. Never stop learning because those who stop learning stop living. Bye-bye.